Now, joining us is NBC News senior political editor Mark Murray and Cook Political Report House prognosticator Dave Wasserman. Um, first, Dave, still to you, I just want to get some of these numbers straight. We've been reporting our, de our decision desk that 18 races are still not called for. You said that Democrats need a miracle to hold on to the chamber. So you've drilled down on these individual House races. Tell us where you see the, the best advantage, I guess, for the Republicans in the remaining House districts. Yeah, Andrea, Democrats have needed to run the table on the remaining outstanding, very close races in order to win 218 seats. And that path has involved uh, three critical seats uh, in uh, Arizona's first district, Arizona's sixth district, and California's 41st district. And last night, the counts weren't what Democrats needed in those three seats. And while NBC News has not called those races, it's now going to take a miracle or another development in, in another race where Democrats are trailing in order to, to get them back in contention. The most likely result here is that Republicans end up with somewhere along uh, about around 219, 220, or 221 seats, which is pretty astonishing considering that Republicans are currently on track to win about 4% more votes than Democrats nationally. And Mark, let's talk about what we've learned from, for instance, what's happened out in Maricopa County, what's left out there in terms of how the vote keeps, you know, coming in, despite all of what has been said by Donald Trump and other election deniers and now beginning to be also Kelly Ward, who's falling behind about, uh, you know, Katie Bob Hobbs, but for the governor's race, Maripona, Maricopa County has some of the best vote counting processes because of past problems. Yeah, Andrea, they have a whole lot of practice, and we have a whole lot of practice watching the Arizona returns. We saw this in 2018, we saw it in 2020, and we're seeing it again in 2022. And what ends up going on is there's this ping pong of like where the votes are in particular counties, and even in counties like Maricopa, and that's uh, the Phoenix area, you end up having Republican pockets and Democratic pockets, and then different kind of vote methods on some are stronger for Republicans and Democrats. Last night was supposed to be a really good batch of votes for Carrie Lake, the Republican running, and she ended up winning them, but not by the margins that you need to be able to have. And with Katie Hobbs now having a 26,000 vote margin, for Carrie Lake to be able to win, the remaining returns have to be not only good, but certainly great. And uh, the Hobbs campaign, after the la latest batch of ballots that came out from Maricopa County, ended up declaring her as the unequivocal front runner or favorite to be able to win. Now, again, it's important to note that NBC has only referred to this race is too close to call, but certainly it does seem to be that Katie Hobbs, the Democratic nominee, is in the driver's seat. And Dave Wasserman, uh, let's go to Colorado, where Lauren Bulbert uh, looks like she's ahead. Is, is she ahead? That's still undecided. You also have an upstate New York race that's not decided, but most of the undecideds are seats are in California, which has always been slow. Right. And in Colorado's third district, Lauren Boebert is ahead by over 1,100 votes. And there are some remaining votes to, to be counted, uh, perhaps overseas or provisional ballots, but she is the favorite in, in this vote count at the moment. And, you know, what's striking is that when Republicans are, are winning the vote nationally, but only winning a minuscule or on track to win a minuscule majority in the House, that's a sign that something's gone terribly wrong for their party. And what happened was in the swing districts, problematic Republican candidates, including Lauren Boebert, Joe Kent in Washington State, Bo Hines in North Carolina, they ended up uh, costing Republicans what looked like it, it would be an easy majority. And also, Dave, David, uh, there were a record-breaking number of LGBTQ candidates who, win, who won their midterm races. You've got 400 of these candidates breaking the 2020 record, and Oregon and Massachusetts electing their first lesbian governors, Tina Kotek and Mar Healy. So that, that's a changing cultural issue. That is. And in addition, there was an openly gay Republican who was elected on Long Island, George Santos. And so it's a bit bipartisan. One of the ways Republicans were able to win a handful of the seats they did was by nominating candidates who didn't look or sound like Donald Trump or didn't fit the typical profile of the Republican Party. And just very briefly, Mark, also, let's talk about some of the issues that maybe didn't show up in exit polls but may have had an impact. 
Speaker Pelosi acknowledging to a question from my friend Anna Bash this weekend that the violence, the violence against your husband, Paul, the week before the election, and the Republican really cruel responses by Kelly Ward, by Donald Trump, by others, Glenn Young couldn't apologize later, that that might have had an influence on boosting the sort of, this is intolerable, the democracy factor, the civility factor. Yeah, Andrea, I mean, something did change in the race in the last week, week and a half. And I don't know if it was the attack on Paul Pelosi or others, but even in our NBC News poll found that Democrats ended up increasing their enthusiasm. Now, was that just natural kind of coming back, particularly even after a lot of the reports about, remember, going into the last week or two, the story was Republicans are the ones in the driver's seat. And so was it the Pelosi attack? Was it that Democrats were more motivated? But we, we ended up seeing was that Democrats did turn out, which is one of the ways that you end up lessen not only uh, potential losses in a midterm, but end up, you know, doing as well as they end up doing. So something was certainly pointing in their direction the last week, week and a half of the election. Mark Murray, as always, David Wasserman, thanks so much. Stay close by, you, both of you guys. <laughs>